Hello and welcome. On today's video, I'm going to show you guys what to do if your V Rising server that you happen to be playing on shuts down, but you have the game file. So I'm just going to use my own server as an example. My server is shutting down about a month from now. So I want to make sure you guys are able to implement this as a local save. Uh, so we're going to get right into it. So the first step, I'm going to go to where the link is. So I provided the link in this folder, which you could find the link to in the Vamps Discord. Uh, I might also put it in the description of this video uh, just for ease of access. Now, there's two folders here. There's one folder that has the game files plus game settings, and the second folder, which has creative mode settings. The creative mode settings are something that I use myself, but if you guys would like to have access to that, that's why it's there, but that's not really relevant to the greater part of this video. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to uh, download the folder. So we're going to download the folder. In this case, I'm going to save the folder to my desktop just for the sake of this video. So I'm going to save it right to my desktop. All right. And now we have the file right here. So uh, let me just make sure it's done downloading. Looks good. All right, cool. So next I'm going to extract the files. So we're going to go, uh, if you have like an extractor, like 7-zip or something like that, you can just extract it. I'm just going to extract it right on the desktop. All right. And now I can delete this. I don't really need this anymore. So I'm going to open up this folder. Whoops. I'm going to open up this folder. It's going to open up a separate folder with the game files and the server game settings. Um, I'm also going to open up V Rising. All right, and the next few steps are pretty easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the play button and then we're going to go to private game. Now remember, the goal with this is to be able to implement the server files as a local save instead. This will allow you to have full control of the game, full control of the castles and all of that good stuff. And I'll show you exactly how to do that once we get in game. So I'm gonna name this. Uh, vamps file so that I know that this is the game that I want to uh, you know use the settings on but you can name it anything you want I'm just using this for the sake of this tutorial so I'm gonna hit new uh, start new game this part of the process is pretty much what usually takes the longest as far as booting up your game is when you first start out and you create a brand new game file so that's exactly what's happening here at least from what I can tell um, so we just got to wait till we get to that character creation screen. All right. So now we've made it to the character creation screen. And now that we've done that, we have a game file that has now been produced. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to hit escape here and we're going to cancel vampire customization and leave the game. So we're going to hit yes. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to load game and we're going to click on the vamps file. And then we're going to hit go to directory on the right hand side here. And now it's opened up this window. So in this window, you can see that there is auto save underscore zero. Now this right here is actually the game file. So we're going to click on it and we're going to hit delete. We don't need that. Um, another thing we're not going to need is server game settings. So we're going to delete that as well. Uh, as far as all your other stuff goes, uh, you can pretty much leave that there for now. But if you did want to change the name of your game file, you can uh, open up the file here with any kind of uh, software uh, program that can allow you to change like code and stuff like that. Anything that supports like a .json file and you can rename your file here. So uh, vamps file and maybe I want to put a smiley face random here just to kind of, you know, get my point across. We don't have to do that step. I just thought it was worth mentioning. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that game file folder that I had 
earlier that we downloaded, right? And we're going to take the auto save uh, file. We're going to click and drag that over. And we're also going to take the server game settings file and drop that over. Now we're going to close that out. We're going to close this folder out and we're going now this part is the most important part. So do not skip this step, guys. Hit refresh. And once you hit refresh, we see that there's a smiley face here that I wrote in. We see that the date says 10 slash three for the most current uh, date of this file at 1245 p.m. So once you see that, you know that you have this file correct. Now, remember, this is just this example is just my server particularly. Just to be very clear, uh, if you're just watching this as someone who just wants to know the process, uh, these dates and times are going to be different. But just keep in mind that once you hit refresh, you should see some kind of change here, especially in the date and time uh, to a time in the past uh, if you're implementing uh, game files from the past obviously so now that we've hit refresh right and we've we've done that i'm going to click on it and i'm going to host game now because i am part of the server currently the actual live server the game already knows oh this is that player so it's going to immediately recognize me as being on the server now if we're looking at a game file that maybe you don't have a character on yet, you might get a character creation screen instead. So just keep that in mind. If you get a character creation screen, just do what you normally would. Um, the only thing that might be an issue is if you try to use a name of someone who's already on the file for some reason, like if you want the same name, it might not let you create a character with that name. So just kind of keep that in mind. But yeah, so it looks like I am right where I left off when I was on the live server. And as you can see, uh, everything is retained. We have all of the castles of the people on the server. Hey guys, there's your castles. <laughs> um, we have my clan members castles. My clan is still my clan, even though I don't have anyone in here. But if I really wanted to, I could invite other players to play with me. That's another discussion in itself, a whole nother tutorial. I'm not going to get into that here, but you know the possibilities are there or if i were to implement this file on a brand new server then players who have already been here or who were already you know have their progress saved on the server would have the similar experience to me where they would just be able to log in and pick up where they left off so there is another thing i'm going to mention there was another viewer who actually asked me about castle claiming like a, uh, another person on the server so i figured i'd mention it here but i'm also going to demonstrate how to do it so obviously i showed up in my own castle but we're going to use some advanced controls from the console in order to claim other castles on the server so what we're going to do is we're going to hit escape and this step is important because not everyone uses the console regularly uh, so this will be just good to know and we're going to hit options. When we get to the options page, we're going to look down under general and see where it says console enabled and make sure that this is checked off. If this is not checked off, then you cannot use the console. So we're going to hit escape again, go back into the game. And now I'm going to use the, uh, well, I guess I'll put the I'll put a picture of what the key looks like on the screen. I don't know what this key is actually called, but um, think of it kind of like, well, actually, if I type it in the chat, it looks like this. And I know that's really small, so I might just put like a picture or something on the screen to make it easier to find. I'll show you guys where it is on the keyboard. So what we're going to do now, I got to make sure I'm not in the chat while I'm doing this. I'm going to hit that button and then I'm going to type in admin auth now when i started typing admin it immediately showed me admin auth so before i even finish it because it's already highlighting the option i want i'm going to hit the tab button now if you press tab while you have that command line set up it'll automatically choose that option and type out the rest for you so we're going to hit enter and you can see at the bottom here in the 
uh, chat, it says you now have administrator privileges, super admin. So great. You've, you've eaten your veggies and now you're a superhero of the server. Okay. <laughs> well, super admin, we'll leave it at that. Or maybe super villain because we're vampires, but that's besides the point. Anyway, so we're going to do a little bit of an example here. So also to close this menu, to close the console, you can press the same button and it'll just automatically close the console. Uh, so I'm going to use, let's see, who shall be the unlucky victim today? Hmm. You know what? Let's go with Countess Florence's castle. They always have awesome builds and stuff like that. So I'm going to get my greedy little hands onto your castle. Your castle shall be possessed. Okay. So the important thing is I'm going to right click, right? And of course I'm poking fun because I know they're going to watch this. Everyone, you know, I, I love you guys. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. I'm just, te I'm just teasing. Um, so I'm going to right click here onto their castle, directly onto their castle. And I'm going to hit escape, right? And then I'm going to press that button again to enable the console. And this time I'm going to type teleport to map marker. Now notice again, it finishes the sentence for me. So I'm just going to press tab and then I'm going to hit enter. And then it's immediately going to move my vampire to that position that I have marked on the map. Now, if for some reason you press that button or you use that command and it doesn't work and nothing happens, what that usually means is that you've selected an invalid place to stand, essentially. Um, so that's basically why that is. Now we're going to use another advanced method. Now I'm already inside their castle, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the console again. And because I don't know where the castle heart is, I'm going to type toggle. And if you start, uh, if you look at this, you can use the up and down keys on your keyboard to kind of, you know, navigate. So we're going to use toggle observe. I'm going to press tab again to finish the word. And then I'm going to uh, press two to enter ghost mode. Now, if you look down here, it tells you what your command options are. We're going to go for ghost mode. We're going to become the spoopiest of ghosties for the month of October, but not for that reason. Uh, so I'm going to look around. Ooh, a little bit of lag spike there. I'm going to look around. I'm going to see if I can find the castle heart. Now, remember, the castle heart is always going to be on a first floor. It's never going to be uh, in a spot where uh, it's on like a second or third floor. So, oh, here's the castle heart. Perfect. So now that we've gotten the castle heart, Okay, so now this next step is very, very important. Let's say I want to claim their castle, right? So I'm going to use my mouse and I'm going to hover over their castle heart and I'm going to open the toggle key. Now, I'm not going to move my mouse once I open up the, uh, sorry, not the toggle key, uh, the console key, right? Once I open up the console, I'm not going to move my mouse because my mouse is right here over the heart and I want it to be over the heart. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in castle and then before as soon as we type cast castle heart event is the first thing on here. So we're going to we're going to choose that. We're going to press tab and then we have options. We have abandon, claim, destroy, expose, raid and upgrade. Uh, upgrade is, of course, you know, uh, going from like higher uh lower to higher level castle hearts and stuff like that so if you want to you know have a level five castle heart and you only have level three you can just use that command twice and then you upgrade right so in this case we're going to claim so we're going to go down we're going to use the down button once to go to the second option and then i'm going to press tab to choose claim and then we have options here now notice these options list every single person who has a castle on the server right in our case, we're going to use the first option, which is local. We're going to press tab again. And then instead of filtering through all these different choices and, you know, of course you have the names, you can always go down this list and, you know, see which ones you like. Right. But in this case, we're just going to use mouse. The mouse is already hovering the castle heart. So I'm going to press tab. So we have, so the command says castle heart event claim local mouse. And then we're going to hit enter. You should hear a sound effect where uh, your castle heart, you know, you've just claimed a castle heart. The biggest indicator right away was this mistress of blood, the servant who happened to be here. 
And this servant's name, if you notice, changed to be the familiar blue. So now this castle belongs to my clan. It belongs to me. I'm the castle holder, so I can interact with the castle heart. But in order to do that, I'd have to get out of ghost mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the console key. And because we uh, did our toggle observe as the second to last option, before we type anything, we're just going to press the up key once and then twice. And then we're going to hit delete on the two and instead press zero and then hit enter to remove ghost mode. So now I can interact with the castle heart. I can see, you know, all the stuff in the castle. I can see how many servant coffins. I can see the floors. I, you know, and if I open up the map, it obviously I've, you know, this is my castle now, right? So that's just one example um, of how to implement this. So yeah, you have all these different options and the game will basically you know act like it's your castle now uh i'm just gonna use a different example so maybe i'm gonna go over to uh let's go to rillian's castle right so we're gonna do this again but this time we're gonna do something different so i'm gonna go to i'm gonna open the the console tab right oh by the way guys if you do this and you're not using the settings that i provided in the folder and you're just using default settings make sure you're in ghost mode before you enter a castle because the servants will attack you so keep that in mind uh if you're in ghost mode nothing will sense that you're there and nothing will attack you so just kind of uh, be aware of that that's something i should have mentioned a little bit sooner but i'm going to make sure to mention it here now uh so this time we're going to uh go up to teleport to, to map marker because i just marked it so what i'm going to do since we can see that i did it previously i'm going to keep pressing the up key until we get the teleport to map marker and i'm going to hit enter cool so the reason uh why i'm not being attacked is because i have pve settings obviously on this uh game file but uh yeah so oh look we have a castle heart right i would have to normally hold to access the castle heart but i'm not gonna have to do that because remember we're the super admin so we have superpowers all right okay so what i'm gonna do with this castle is gonna be a little bit different i'm gonna press the console key right and uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go and type in castle so we're gonna choose castle heart event by pressing tab and maybe i want to destroy this castle right so we're gonna hit tab and then local and then mouse right so remember use tab to select in the console and then as soon as we're ready to get our command i'm gonna make sure my mouse is over the castle heart i'm gonna hit enter and boom everything and everyone has been destroyed the only one surviving is the horse ironically and for some reason this random uh thing here is just bugged out so oh no really and what happened friend <laughs> oh no okay i guess i'd have to save you i feel a little bad i feel a little bad i can't let them destroy you like that i'm sorry <laughs> don't hate me <laughs> but yeah if i'm gonna destroy a castle that's exactly how you know what let me move you away from the bear too you know it might be a little it'd be a little risky all right okay there we go so now we're good i don't know why this particular one is like bugged up into the sky but that is hilarious <laughs> so yeah i hope this gives you guys an idea of how to kind of navigate if like let's say the server you're on goes down but you have the world file um this definitely helps a lot it's a lot easier than you know one might think as far as how to set things up and uh just remember that when you uh, like the file, like the game settings file that we dragged into the folder, if you want, uh, actually, you know what? I'll show you guys how to do it. So what we're going to do, we're going to exit. We're going to save an exit, right? So we saved an exit and I'm going to show you guys how to save the settings for that game file. So we're going to go to load game and we're going to choose the vamps file, right? And we're going to go and hit edit settings. Now that I've hit edit settings, I'm going to save new rule set and I'm just going to name it vamps test, uh, sorry, vamps, uh, example, just for my own thing. I can write a, you know, thing or whatever the heck I want to write in there, hit save. And then I'm going to, 
uh, now that I've saved that new rule set, if I'm going to use that rule set for anything else, um, I can definitely use it for a new file. So let's say I wanted to start a brand new game completely unrelated. I could hit play, go to private game, advanced game settings, select rule set. And then now if I scroll down all the way to the bottom here, uh, there's a bunch of options. I'm going to choose the vamps example option, and then you can load. And once you load the rule set, you hit save. And then when, once you hit save, I'm not going to save it here because I don't want to make a brand new file. But once you hit save, then you're able to reuse those same settings over and over and over again. Uh, and that's the same thing with the uh, creative mode file. Uh, so basically, the difference would be that if you wanted to use the creative mode settings instead of the server settings, all you would have to do is just download that one as well. And then instead of dragging the game settings from the world file, uh, uh, folder instead you would drag it from the creative mode folder so yeah that's basically how you do this that's how you uh, implement your server settings and stuff like that if you have any questions or concerns or you're not sure how to do something or you're you're really stuck and struggling with this example please reach out to me please let me know and i'll be more than happy to help you through it so yeah, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, Sholo out.